Good morning and welcome back. It is now Monday, August the 8th. It was pretty apparent as I drove out of the mountains last night that uh, in the last week it's been pretty hot and dry. And as you can see behind me, the crop is coming along really fast. Last time I was in this field, this durum was still quite green. It is now in the ripening stages and we are pretty much into hard dough here now. Although a lot of these kernels are still a bit on the soft side, can definitely still sink a thumbnail into them pretty well, dent them pretty easily. But things are coming along pretty quick out here. Some of the spring wheat is in pretty similar situation. There's still a few green spots in some of these dryland fields here and there, but overall we are ripening up and into the hard dough stage. So things here are looking pretty good. Still soft enough, I can dig a fingernail into them though. Well, the canola at least is still quite green and uh, giving it a quick sweep. Definitely there has been an explosion in Ligus and Diamondback numbers. Diamondback here I would say is still well under threshold, but you can just see how much Ligus is in here. Just absolute piles. Most of them are still nymphs, but in the next week or two they will definitely start causing more and more problems as they get larger. So probably well over a hundred here in 10 sweeps. Well, the canola at least is still quite green and uh, giving it a quick sweep. Definitely there has been an explosion in Ligus and Diamondback numbers. Diamondback here I would say is still well under threshold, but you can just see how much Ligus is in here. Just absolute piles. Most of them are still nymphs, but in the next week or two they will definitely start causing more and more problems as they get larger. So probably well over a hundred here in 10 sweeps. Well, yellow peas are rapidly ripening up. These guys did get sprayed last week with glyphosate and heat. You can see the peas are good and mature and are pretty close to being able to be combined, if not already ready. But the weeds are still a little bit slow. You can see this south thistle here or prickly lettuce. You can see the leaves are burning off from the heat and the glyphosate, but we still need more time for things like that to dry down. You can still see we have a few green kochia and that'll probably take another week or so to dry down yet. Dryland barley coming along rapidly. It has ripened up a lot in the last week or so since I have been here. So a lot of these guys now, we're well into swath timing on the barley here now, into hard dough. We're basically just waiting for it to dry down a little bit more and really it's not far off. So some of this, probably see combines rolling on barley by the end of the week, I would imagine. Oh, here's another field of canola, still fairly green. Still a couple flowers here and there. And once again, very high numbers of Ligus nymphs. Now, most of these guys are small enough. They do not have the black triangle on their back yet. But in this heat, they will be developing to that stage very, very quickly within the week for sure. So I'm definitely going to recommend spraying this field here. Get these guys controlled before it's a problem because there is hundreds of them in 10 sweeps. This was my first seeded dryland canola field up by Nobleford and as you can see it is beginning to ripen when we open up the main stem there's just the first little hints of color change starting to happen and these pods are getting leathery so even though ligus numbers are quite high in this field they're mostly nymph ligus that are a week or so away from being mature enough to cause much damage and this field will ripen up quite significantly in the next week so I'm not too worried about this one at all only the ones that are still have a couple flowers or are very green. Well, with the heat and dryness that has been apparent here for the last two weeks or so now, you can see these reseeded oats on dry land are really struggling. We do have some really good emergence in a few spots, but then right beside it, we have totally dry rows here where there's just absolutely no moisture in the seed row. And as a consequence, we had basically absolutely zero germination. So right now it's not looking like a very good stand, but uh, who knows if we get some showers or thunderstorms in the next week or two, this could change rapidly. Well, there is some very heavy grasshopper pressure along the edge of some of these fields as some of these pastures, like over here, continue to dry down. However, now that the crop is getting ripe, there's not a whole lot of damage that they can continue to do at this point. They can still chew on any greener heads out there, but really where the damage at this point can come in is when they start cutting off some of these heads, just like these guys right here. So these were tillers that were a little less developed and you can see grasshoppers have basically chewed through that stem where it was still green and that is going to result in the loss of that head both because it didn't finish filling out it'll have wrinkled underdeveloped kernels and it'll probably just fall off or a combine has a time to get it well back to that young field of dryland canola it was still trying to flower but the heat has pretty much put an end to that 
there is still a few blooms here and there that are trying but it is mostly blasted away when you sweep it for bugs now you can see we have a quite a large increase in the amount of diamondback moth larvae that is in here so that is starting to be concerning there is some visible feeding on the leaves and on the pods as well so we will pretty much have to come in here get these guys under control Sorry, this camera is really not very good at uh, macro footage but you can just see the liquid on these young pods here and that is all from feeding from both ligus as well as the diamondback moth larvae if you can see the tip of this little young pod here is just glistening with sap from all the feeding so that is not nice to see definitely some yield loss here we'll have to get these guys under control you can see a little guy right on that final pod there feeding away as well here on this main stem you can see all of the cocoons so these guys are in uh, kind of middle of a generational stage there they're just going to turn into a moth here probably fairly quickly when it's really hot like this these guys can have a new generation about every seven to ten days so their population can explode very quickly back to that hailed out corn by Colhurst. it's looking not too terribly bad this week it is definitely still quite short i'd say it's mostly under six feet tall you can see a few of them are starting to tassel and we do have some silks coming out now not all of them are tasseling but lots of them are silking like this one here is trying to form a ear but there's no tassel in sight and that is perfectly fine generally one tassel has more than enough pollen for several plants but we'll see what kind of happens in here. Definitely it's not going to be a, you know, 20 ton silage crop in here. But it'll still end up being something. Pretty limited regrowth on this field. Not looking too good. Might not even average one ton. Here in this hail damaged canola, it is really starting to reflower now. So we have lots of new pods, new flowers getting set. And there's a pretty substantial amount of surviving older pods in here as well. But now, of course, we have a huge influx of small ligus nymphs so right now technically we'd still be under threshold but not by very much about half of these ligus nymphs now have the dark patterns on their back so they are actively starting to feed on some of those pods so we'll have to get these guys under control here because this canola is probably going to flower for at least another week or so yet well here by last bridge the dryland corn managed to keep up to the irrigated until about two weeks ago when it started to get really hot and it stopped raining so it's not looking quite so good now you can see it has a very spiky upright appearance and that is to protect itself and minimize moisture loss here inside the irrigated portion of the field it is looking absolutely spectacular it's getting pretty tall should yield pretty well for tonnage and it's just starting to set ears here so a lot of it is still silking some of it like this one has just finished and it will start to fill in the next week or so here lentils down by mcgrath have been desiccated now with an application of reglone ion and they're looking pretty good so now that these guys are maturing and dropping their leaves you can really see the volume of pods on here so they have really potted out very well so i'm expecting a pretty decent yield off these guys uh, looking very promising at this time well here's something i don't often get to see in person this grasshopper here has her back end buried right in the dirt on the side of this little gravel road here and she is busy trying to deposit her eggs so let's see if i can gently pull her out here there we go Oop, and she's gone so she is potentially leaving eggs down in that little hole and if we are lucky we get a cool wet fall there'll be high mortality rate on those eggs but uh, if it stays hot and dry like this probably have pretty good success into the next year well this pioneer hybrid m35 is looking really good and as you can see the field is starting to ripen however it's not all natural ripening a lot of it is because of black leg so you can see here this plant here definitely have a good black leg in infection in that root there so that is causing this plant to kind of prematurely start to ripen and in this case it's almost an artificial ripening the pods are turning brown but the seeds inside are still relatively green so there's no visible color change yet so that is prematurely ripening some of these plants are worse than others there's a patch right here for example you can see these guys are kind of crispy brown when you pull them out that root is completely dead that is a you know class 5 severity for black leg so there's basically there's no moisture still coming up into that plant so it's just completely crisping off on us here let's see if i can open one of these pods yeah so you can see those seeds are having color change but they are kind of uh off color brown and shriveled 
Oh, here's another barley field that's getting close to harvest time. And you can see we do still have a few green patches in this field. And that means it's not going to hurt let this sit for a few more days before swathing in order to even things up. It's not uncommon to see fields with big di differences in staging this year due to our poor emergence conditions this spring. So that's about it for this week. Overall, not a whole lot going on other than some peas getting combined and a few crops getting swathed or desiccated. Next week, I'm sure there'll be a lot more going on with harvest. I think some of the barley is going to start coming down.